Hello everyone. So today we are going to implement this procedural centipede character. Now this is the demonstration. As you can see, this character ha has legs and it's moving. So actually it's not a full character. This is based on the procedural snake character that I developed some time ago. So these are just instance restarting meshes and if I select the character, where is it? If I select the character and I can change the length of the character by changing this value. That's why I call it procedural. So let me make it a long one. And also this guy can eat these boxes. So as it eat boxes, it will become longer. So yeah, here is the demonstration. Let me just climb this uh, object and show you a little bit more demonstration. Okay, so let's see how to do this today. So this is the playlist that I worked on this procedural snake character. Here you can, uh, if you don't remember, you can watch these videos. So how did I get started with this character? And also I'd like to remind you that you can download the project files of not just this project, all the 1600 tutorials that I have worked on to the date. Uh, you can download projects of all those tutorials in my Patreon page. Once you become a member, you can download all of them without a limit. So. Feel free to check it out. I'll leave the link in description below. And let's get back to the tutorial. Okay, so this is what we have at the moment. Here is the snake character. You can see as we eat more boxes, it becomes longer. So right now, based on this character, Let's create the centipede. So I'll just simply duplicate this character and call it C A centipede. Okay. Right now, instead of the snake, I'll replace the centipede and possess the player. So for now, there is no difference, of course. So let me uh, change the mesh of the centipede. So here we are using this cube and I have already imported this uh, mesh like this. Uh, it's just a simple mesh, nothing special. I have created this in uh, blend. This is the model. So I have already imported it here and I'm going to assign this mesh instead of this cube for this ISM component. Now this is how it looks. So obviously it's uh, too packed. So it's too close together. So we have this uh, instance transform scale. So here I'll reduce this to something like 0.3 yeah now we have some distance and this I think we should increase a little bit because uh, those centipedes are like somewhat flat across okay now we already have the system but it's the legs are not moving so that's the main part we are going to work on. Okay, so for that, so this is where we have implemented the movement logic. So basically what we are doing is, uh, we get 
the instance transforms because this is uh, an instance static mesh component and we have added instances of that mesh uh, and that's how we have implemented this centipede so here you see this body count means the instance number of instances that we add from this instance static mesh component so if i make this let's say 20 you can see it changes see so that's why i call this procedural so and the things are working still right now so here what we are doing is we get the location of one instance transform of one instance and assign it to the next instance that's how we get this movement of instances mesh instances as the character moves forward now what i want to do is uh, this character should uh, show <laughs> some leg movement so for example like a wave when this legs uh, one leg lifts like in a wave and others on the ground so I'm planning to do that by adding some movement, uh, some rotation to these mesh instances as it moves forward. Right, so how do we do that? Uh, first, we are lurping this one. So let me break this. Okay, and this is going to be input. Let me break it also and split. So we don't need to make any change to the location or scale. So we only need to manipulate rotation to get the legs animated effect. So if I change X, it would be uh, it would be rotating the mesh components around this axis so basically x-axis let me reset it so that's what we need to change mainly so we don't need to change your or pitch components for now so how do we get a movement as the character moves forward in the way we want that it looks like the legs are moving so for that this is what i'm gonna do i'm gonna get the location and get the vector length the reason to get this is because as the character moves uh, this location changes and with that this vector length changes so if i get the modulus of this let me Let's make a literal float like 200. So 200 by 200, we will get a value that goes from zero to 200. So we don't really need that much of a rotation. So let me divide the result with the 200 so basically same number as this one so we will get a value that is changing from 0 to 1 and for now if i multiply this with 20 it's just also some number i thought that would work and connect to x let's see what happens see now you can already see some movement but it only rotating in one direction so what we need to do is it's working so what we need to do is it should not just in positive direction it should also rotate to negative direction as well so to implement that behavior here i'll add a float curve Curve. right 
curve float. What should we call it? Handle curve. Okay, so let's add a key at zero. Right. At zero, value should be zero. Okay. At one, also value should be zero. And at uh, point two five, we need something like a sign, basically. So go here, come back, go here. So at point 0.5 also it has to be 0. At point 0.25 should be point 0.25 value should be point 0.25 value should be 1 like this and at uh, point seven five value should be minus one like this now I'll create a variable and curve it should be a floor curve no curve float this one now we can assign this angle curve okay now get it and value get value get float value this one so as the time we can give this value that is changing from 0 to 1 and as the value we will get the corresponding value here as we have defined in this curve now let's see hey, yeah it's working now Okay. Uh, the first section is not moving. Hmm. Why is that? Uh, uh, reason could be this. Well, what if I collapse this part to a macro? Um, get and and you sit here. We need to get the location and here we only get the raw so connect other to connect raw from this now let's see yeah that's also moving okay maybe i should move the head forward oh. we can't well actually we can fix it here when we set the first instance location we can get actor forward and multiply it with let's say minus 100 because we need to push back it Put, uh, and then add 
do the actor transfer. Now let's see. Yeah, it's working now. Not inside the head anymore. Also, I think it would be better if we rotate it a little bit around the Z axis as well. So, get this. Uh, yeah, A. This is uh, X or so, Y. And return is also Roll. Roll. I'll call it roll out. So for the your part, um, oh, this is location. Sorry. Go curve. Yeah, here I'll multiply this with some smaller value like five and add as a different out. This I'll call yo out. Okay, and I'll add to the yo because uh, yo should be based on the general direction of the characters moving of that segment so we can't replace it so i'll add you out and update it like this right now let's see now it should have some moment in the u as well but it's not very clear but anyway i think the moment that we have is already enough okay so i think we can stop this episode right here thanks for watching as always, updated project files will be available for the download in Patreon page. Link would be in the description below. And see you in another episode. Feel free to let me know what else I should try in this series and also what do you think about this.